which no one ever expects. Uh huh. Except it kind of makes sense. <sighs> you know, because A, so I'm, I'm organized. Yeah. I'm perfectionist. You didn't say yeah after that. Well, I mean, there's also <laughs> punctual on the list. Oh. <laughs> uh, and then. <laughs> and patient. Patient. Err. Welcome to the Happy Project Podcast. This is season three, and you are listening to episode one of season three in January 2021. And what a special 2021 it has been so far. Two weeks in. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Yeah, we are back. Super excited to be back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 2021. Uh, Interesting start. Uh, hopefully it's been a great start for everyone, but, uh, I mean, it's been good for me, yeah. but I think, you know, I, I think everyone thought that 2020, as soon as, you know, it ended, it's like, okay, a new year. Oh, clock reset. Everything. Yeah. But, uh, nah, but just psych. a continuation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so. before we move on with the episode and more chit chat I thought we should just say who we are for people who are tuning in for the first time. Because I know we've got some listeners who's been sharing some of our things, which has been wonderful. And so if this is your first time tuning into the Happy Project podcast, the voice you're listening to right now, or if you're watching on the YouTube channel, I am Becky, your host. And sitting across from me is Cedric Sky Sedi. Co-host. Co-host. We're both half Korean. Yes, we are. And uh, we've been doing the Happy Project podcasts for, well, two seasons before already (laughs) because it's season three and uh, we have the happy project youtube channel and also you have probably seen cedric on the other channel sky study and uh well we have some exciting news to share first before we get into our topic and surprisingly they might be related to each other depending on what you believe that's true yeah that'll be a good segue for a little later, but uh, yeah. What What's our um, announcement? Are you going to put it on me? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, a couple weeks ago, I decided to propose to you. <laughs> and you, you said yes. Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. Yeah. And uh, you said yes. Mm-hmm. And so we are officially engaged. If you guys are looking at the YouTube channel video, you can see the the diamond yeah turn down the brightness on your screen everybody because uh Woo! it's blinging yes so we are now engaged Yahoo! yeah i think a lot of you guys saw it coming maybe i think a lot of people who listen probably had no idea <laughs> like, yeah maybe not dating. oh wow i didn't even really like each other but if you've been watching the youtube channel i think there are many people who have said oh i predicted this from day one from the very first video that came out on the Happy Project channel. So you True. guys were there from the beginning until now, and you will continue joining us on this journey. And today's journey begins uh, somewhere very deep inside of us. <laughs> it's literally. Very, literally so personal. We're going to talk about blood types. And I'm sure there are some listeners who are like, okay, you just announced your engagement and now you're going to go to blood. That's so weird. But not entirely because there are um, some personality theories related to your blood type that are still prevalent today in Korea and Japan. And so we're going to talk a little bit more about that a bit later and figure out, well, you have to guess what my blood type is. Okay. Do you know? I do not know. I think you told me. Yeah, but because I'm sure we've talked it. about it before. Mm. Uh, because you were shocked that I didn't know mine. Right. Uh, but I do not remember your blood type. Okay, so great. I'm going to have to figure it out based off of your this, personality. This, that's linked yeah. To it. You got to know, and it's important to know. Okay, because there are some blood types that are better matches than other blood types. Okay, so we already know you're a believer. No. In the blood type okay, personality. It's kind of like um like astrology. You know, in the West, yeah. everyone's like, oh, I'm a Virgo. I'm a scorpion. What, what are they? <laughs> um, but, you know, there's, there's all of those things. And so people may not believe it entirely, but it's fun to talk about. And some people do believe it. It's a pseudoscience, really. Yeah. And so blood type theory is uh, kind of along the lines of that. But before we get into that, let's talk a little bit first about what are blood types how do you get your blood type what is that Mm, that's a good question well a couple of things to note uh well one we're not medical experts (laughs) but uh (laughs) 
Yeah, blood types are, well, the amount of blood in your body is determined by your body size. Which makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So you I'm a bigger have guy. More blood than I me. have more blood. Yeah. Um, and blood types are also inherited. Right. So it really depends on your parents and the combination of their blood types that makes up your blood type. Yeah. Yeah. And also, in terms of determining the actual blood type and how they determine it is, is by the antigens that are on the surface of your red blood cells. Yeah. So already, uh, when I was looking this up, I was like, antigens? It didn't seem to make it clear to me. Everyone was like, oh, your blood type is determined by your antigen moving on. Antigens, so if you look into it, they're pretty much, they're molecules like proteins or sugars that are found on the surface of your red blood cells, not your white blood cells, the red blood cells. And those are determined, again, by genetic differences. And those antigens will, if you have some or if you don't have certain types, will determine if you're A, B, O, or AB. Those are the four main ones. And then you can further divide those categories by the RH factor, which is if you have seen negative or plus next to blood type, O positive, O negative, blah, blah, blah. And some of them are more common than others. Right. Yes. So the most common around the world is O positive. O positive. Yeah. So in the U.S., this is seen... Highly in Latinos and African Americans. I'm, <laughs> your, I'm sorry. Well, what's that, your accent? <laughs> I'm sorry. I hope that didn't offend it. That just came out. I wasn't. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it was very natural. Mm. I grew up around a lot of Latinos, mm -hmm. and so I just remember just whenever they How people said would say it. like Spanish words, yeah. they just rolled out the accent. Uh, so yeah. Um, well, you are fluent in Spanish, so. <laughs> Not at all. So, <laughs> yeah, again, Latinos and African Americans, uh, you see the O positive mm -hmm. uh, a lot in them. And also, countries with O positive uh, rep are like Chile, 85%, I believe, of Chileans yeah. uh, are O positive. Approximately, right. Approximately, yeah. Ecuador, you have 75%. Peru, 70%. And then Zimbabwe. That felt to me kind of left field. Yeah, just sort of like. Just a whole nother continent, right? Right. Yeah. All these people are like, we're also positive. <laughs> hey. Yeah. So they, about 63% roughly. But that's a big percentage of the population. Mm -hmm. That's quite a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting how you can kind of narrow down in certain countries. Like, oh, these people group are mostly primarily this blood type. So in a way, it kind of shows this like, mm, I hate to use the term purity, quote unquote, but it does show kind of blood type purity, mm -hmm. right? If you have big percentage of one ethnic group having the same blood type. And so you can see this, for example, I think there were some indigenous groups that are entirely one blood type. For example, the Peruvian Indians or the Mayans would be one entirely blood type. Right. So you, it's fun how you can track that down. Be like, oh, wow, your blood type. Oh, okay, you know, because you have these genetic similarities. And this was all um, kind of kicked off this categorizing method by the Austrian physician Karl Landsteiner in 1901. This goes way back, and he won a prize for helping to make blood transfusions safer. Okay, so we kind of gave a very cursory overview of blood types. And everyone should know their blood type. In my opinion, I think we should all donate blood. I think it's important. Have, have you ever donated? I have I? I feel like I have uh, maybe like 15, 20 years ago, like in my early 20s. Yeah. Because I, re I remember going, I, I forget what it was about or like why I was in this position, but I remember them asking me if I'd been to certain countries mm -hmm. uh, within a certain period of time. Right. And uh, I think I qualified to donate. Yeah. So I think I did once. So you did. But this is so long ago. So yeah. I don't really remember, but I think I tried to <laughs> at least. We'll go with that. You tried to. Yeah. <laughs> Please take it. <laughs> yeah. Take I mean, blood. but I'm, I'm definitely open. I just never really thought about it and mm -hmm. just proactively said, you know what, let me go ahead and donate my blood. Sure. But I'm totally open to doing that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you should be careful where you're donating that blood That's for true. sure. But I think it is important. Um, right now with the with the situation happening in the world as we know, the current pandemic, I've heard in some countries that they are in need of blood donations. So you should consider checking out your local drive um, and see if they're still taking it. I've donated blood a handful of times. And I remember the first time I was really scared. And so I didn't, didn't look at it. <laughs> you know, they give you the little globe spongy thing to squeeze to help well, pump that blood up faster. I don't remember getting that. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe you passed out. Are you one Probably. of those people? Who no, gets I'm, dizzy? Not, I'm not. No, no, I'm not like really afraid of needles or like 
Actually, it's kind of cool. No, you're afraid of needles. You think so? No, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, you hate getting shots. I, I mean, who loves getting shots? Well, but I'm not that's like true. some people are really afraid of needles. Okay. So I can handle needles, and it's just like okay, there it goes. It's in me, you know. Do you watch it? Sometimes. Do you get scared of blood? Does blood uh, make you queasy? It depends, I guess. Yeah. On the nature of the injury, let's say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I mean, like, if I were to cut my arm and blood's like gushing out, I don't think I'd be afraid. Oh. I'd probably yeah. be freaking out because, like, Cause there's blood gushing out my arm, but. Yeah. Yeah, but some people are really queasy. Yeah, even if they see like a little drop, mm-hmm. some people just whew, pass out. Yeah. I wonder what that is. It's got to be, I guess, psychological and maybe even a little bit of physiological aspects at play. Hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. Mm. Yeah. Well, the first time I was really freaked out. And then the second time I was like, I'm going to watch this. So I watched it. And I was like, oh, and then I averted my eyes at the last minute. And then I make myself look at it. So every time I feel like I get a little stronger. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it does look like they're drawing so much blood out in it a short amount of time. It feels like it too. Yeah. Because you see it going through the tube. It's yeah. just, it's crazy. Some kind of morbid fascination I think I have. Yeah. Many, that makes sense with you. It, yeah, it totally does. Well, okay. So blood types. We hopefully gave you a brief overview. Now let's move over to the blood type personality theory. It's important to know your own blood type in certain countries. Why? Because people will ascribe to uh, the personality theory determined by your blood type. And I know this might, so some people might sound a little bit like, oh, are you saying that certain blood types have certain characteristics? Oh, so we could judge you by that, which kind of has some racial overtones to it. And let's be honest, it totally does. Mm -hmm. Now, it's become something more of a parlor game. It's more fun. It's conversation fodder. But prior to that, when it first came out, it was initially to have this, there's the blood purity theories um, or like racial integrity theories. And this hails even farther back before Nazis. Let's say in 1910s and 1920s, um, some people were trying to prove racial superiority by blood. We know this carried, of course, to extremes um, with Nazism. (coughs) Excuse me. I can't even say the word. (laughs) Um, And with, you know, people trying to prove, oh, this one race is better than the others. And then it was in the 1920s, an author by the name of Takechi Furukawa published, uh, translated, The Study of Temperament Through Blood Type, uh, a Japanese author. And he was basically trying to connect blood type with temperament. And this this concept has carried over time. And during World War II, of course, with the collapse of Nazism and this ideal Aryan race concept, essentially people were trying to get rid of this idea. But it survived in right. Korea and in Japan. Right. And it became popular in Korea over time due to many different things. If we look historically... Right after the Korean War, who took over the presidency? We know that Lee Seung Man, Park Chung Hee, the first two presidents, really stood by this, you know, blood purity mm-hmm. concept in order to grow Korea's strength and national pride. Right, and if you look into it, I mean, their motivation for it wasn't really based in science. I, I would say, mm-hmm. you know, they they were obviously trying to create this sort of nationalistic sort of. I don't want. I don't, I don't want to just say pride, but just this feeling of nationalism right. and that uh, Korea, we are. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're essentially kind of like the phoenix. The phoenix. Know. Yeah, rising from the ashes. Oh no! Whoa, yeah. that's a good. <laughs> wow, you really jumped over into mythology there. Oh yeah, threw you off guard there. <laughs> you really did. I was like, Phoenix, who? Oh, good. That's so funny. Good one. Oh my gosh. Well, we're gonna. We're gonna. <laughs> I, I really didn't expect that from you. That's why. Wow. Thanks. <laughs> That's not what I meant. We're going to touch more on Korea's obsession with blood purity in a bit. Um, But I just thought I'd dip my toes into that for a moment. So blood type personality theory. This hails way back, though, even before that. I mean, think about it. Aristotle or Hippocrates, who was talking about the four um, bodily humors. Remember where he was defining, oh, you have, what is it? Choleric, sanguine, phlegmatic. Melancholic. And melancholic, right. Mm-hmm. So the four biles or the four humors, and this was for medical uses, um, but was basically equating certain temperaments with blood, blood types. So this goes even far before this sense of racial purity was kind of cropping up. But now that is the point that we're at. 
came over this national pride in Korea. And now in Korea, people talk about blood types and what's personal type and all these things. And this is important for us. And the first thing we mentioned about the engagement, because some blood types apparently get on better with others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to see if we have, I guess, matching blood type. <laughs> well, or if we're doomed for destruction. Oh, oh <laughs> wow. Seems um, like a lukewarm positivity and extreme <laughs> uh, negatives there. So certain blood types have certain characteristics. They have positive sides and negative sides to their characteristics. So let's just run through what people say each blood type has. Yeah, so as far as the good characteristics, out of the four main blood types, mm -hmm. you have blood type A. Uh, they say you're well-organized, you're patient, punctual, you're perfectionist, and you're also creative. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. No, B, <laughs> number B, uh -huh. letter B, blood type B, active, adventurous, passionate, and headstrong. Oh. O, you're optimistic, sociable, confident, and ambitious. Mm -hmm. And then AB is eccentric, cool, rational, and calculating. Yeah, so those are your good characteristics of your blood type. So think about your own blood type and see, is that really me? Now, the bad characteristics of each blood type, when you take it too far to the other side, would be for A's, they become self-conscious or obsessive or uptight. For B's, become irresponsible, selfish, careless. O's can become arrogant, vain, and rude. And AB's can become critical, indecisive, and aloof. Yeah. Aloof. Those are the, the bad characteristics. Yeah. So looking at just these characteristics, can, can you tell which blood type I am? Um, so I think <laughs> you are out of all of these because I could see you falling into the first three especially. But I would say you're strongly B. Oh. Yeah. So you're definitely very active, adventurous for sure. Uh -huh. uh, you're passionate about things that you do. Yeah. Like what we're doing now, Happy Project. And you're I'm very, very selfish and I'm very careless <laughs> and very you, irresponsible. You, you, yeah, you have that bent of being careless, I would say. Oh, boy, you, you're going to really regret saying that when you figure <laughs> out my real blood type. Those, oh, man. Those are the characteristics. And, okay. Okay, so you think I'm a B? Judging yeah. by these characteristics, Judging, I would yeah. say I would say you're an A. Yeah, I would say so, too. Yeah, strongly in the A category, mm -hmm. which is a good thing because type B blood type guys are known as playboys. Mm. So you're not a playboy. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Well, actually, we don't know your blood type, so <laughs> we can't say that. But in 2015, a study that was published in the National Library of Science did say there's no scientific cons consensus that this exists. Mm -hmm. Consensus? Con consensus. Consensus. Yeah. By the way, guys, <laughs> I got little retainers, which does affect the way I speak. Oh, yeah, so blame the retainers. If I, <laughs> yeah, totally the retainers fall. So if I don't sound as clear as I have in prior episodes, that would be the reason why. So here's a big question. Does blood type affect marriage compatibility? Dee -dee. Okay, so you guys in real time, well, it's probably going to be a little later, you're going to see how Becky and I fare out <laughs> in this and what our future will look like. Oh, <laughs> wow. I'm getting really dramatic here, Yeah. Man. All right, so uh, before we really dive into this, I'm going to compare how the different types are in, I guess, in this personality theory, mm -hmm. uh, how they compare with each other. Yeah. Uh, let's go over a couple of notes. So antigens play a role in the immune system. Okay, wait a second. That has nothing to do with the personality theory. This is science. Just yeah, to, okay, okay, yes. <laughs> just to clarify True. for people, there is some scientific... <laughs> There is some scientific basis of um, certain blood types can affect compatibility, but only in the case of if you're having a biological child. Yes, <laughs> yes, which we're going to talk about now. <laughs> okay, so again, the antigens do play a role in the immune system's defense mechanism. Yeah. Because uh, again, white blood cells produce antibodies that attack foreign antigens. Right. Right. So, so oh, go ahead. So, oh. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Um, if you're... A, I was just going to say, if your blood type has certain antigens that my blood type doesn't have any antigens, and then theoretically, hypothetically, in some rhetorical sense, we have a child, <laughs> then uh -huh. that child might have your blood type that my blood type doesn't recognize. Mm -hmm. So the baby's blood types, I could literally trigger an immune response right. in my body. And then my white blood cells would be like, attack! So would it attack like the the development the, of the yes. baby or yes wow. the fetus? So that does mm -hmm. happen. 
Um, there are some ways to prevent this, and I believe you can test ahead of time. Um, and it doesn't seem to be extremely common from what I can tell. And it usually happens in the second pregnancy because the first pregnancy, the body is like, whoa, whoa, what is this? Whoa, 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 and then building their defenses. Right. And then in the second pregnancy, the body's like, okay, we're ready to fight against this foreign substance. So, but there are ways that you can prevent this. So if you're wondering, oh my gosh, does my partner have antibodies? Is going to attack my baby? Then, you know, you can figure that out and there's things that you can do to resolve that. So, okay, there we go. Okay. There's a scientific basis. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying. Things to be aware of. <laughs> now let's get to the fun stuff. Right. So uh, now we're going to use a blood type compatibility theory. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's talk about if blood type A, uh, a man. So we're going to paint scenarios here. Yeah. So it, I know it's quite a lot yeah. of different things. This is A and Bs and Os and ABs. Right. So let's just keep it simple. So let's just say a man who is blood type A, how he would fare with the opposite gender if he were dating <laughs> or, or marrying whatever. So weirdly. I know, <laughs> yeah. I know. And how they would, I guess, fare out. So yeah. blood type A, the man, and blood type A, the woman, how would they fare out? Well, they will be very comfortable with each other, yeah, like friends. friends. Friend zone, unfortunately. No, not uh, okay, like friends. Okay, okay. So it can get boring, but... Every once in a while, you can have a fun date. Yeah. See, yeah. because you're A and A, and both A's are kind of, they're not neurotic, but they're like punctual and well organized. So you'd get on well. Yeah. You know, like, oh, you keep your house clean? I keep my house clean. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. But you could fall in the routine. So don't get bored. That's true. Yeah. So I'm actually glad that I'm not dating or engaged to an A, or am I? Because I don't know. Because you're apparently not a B, because earlier you... You sort of maybe to I maybe I threw that out there to Ooh. get you off the track. Okay, well we'll see. So let's just say uh, blood type A man mm -hmm. goes with blood type B woman. Yeah. So the male timidity of A and the female carefreeness of B mm -hmm. can cause fights. Right. Ooh. So with good communication and the male being considerate, it can make a good couple. It could make a good couple, and that makes perfect sense because A young namja or A type guy with the B young yoja or B type girl. The guy is more what, like timid, he's more, you know, uh, organized and he wants to be a little bit more perfectionist. But mm -hmm. the girl, she's very active and very adventurous and a little headstrong. So naturally there's going to be some fights, right? Especially if he's like, hey, could you like color between the lines? She's like, no, then that's what happens. Right. Yes, but it can work, obviously. Sure. So it just depends. It's sort of a give and take type of scenario, I guess, with A kind of giving a little more to B, <laughs> maybe. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. So let's just say A type with A type man mm -hmm. with O type woman. Mm -hmm. They're a good match because the guy's considerate and because the O type girl is active and happy. It works out. Yeah. So the girl is just doing her thing yeah. and then the, the guy's just supportive, like, oh, yeah, you go out and, you know, climb Mount Everest. I support <laughs> you. O is, o is like the easy way to remember this. O is for optimistic and outgoing. Mm. So they're like leader types because they're outgoing and they're friendly and everyone's like, oh, you're fun. Yeah, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's usually what they say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the A namja, A guy, and A B girl. Okay. Oftentimes uh, they go from friends <gasps> to love. To love. And apparently the guy can understand her well. Yeah, which is great. Because A, B is what? Cool and rational and logic. Doesn't get emotional. A is, you know, patient and careful. So... That works pretty well. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on to the B namjas. So B blood type guys have a bad reputation. They're considered the playboys of the blood types. Yeah. It's, it's definitely not me. <laughs> oh, what if or you end it? up being a B? Yeah. I mean, hey, I, I might, you know. You'd be My shocked. old life, man. <laughs> so B type man with uh, A type woman. Mm -hmm. They can get on if the B type guy can lead her well, yeah. but the B guy has lots of quirks and also needs attention. So she can get tired. This is considered the worst match. Oh, This is the, okay. the worst, what is it called? Compatibility. Mm -hmm. B type guy and A type girl, they are known for having the worst so that's like widely known in Korea, I'm yeah. assuming. So people, when they oh, like, oh, what type? If you're dating a guy, for example, mm -hmm. and they say, oh, what blood type is he? And she says, oh, he's B. And they're like, oh, you have to be careful of B namja. Like, that's all you say. Right. Oh, B namja, 조심해야 돼. Like, B young namja. They're playboys. And then if she says, oh, I'm A, 
or your friend's like, hey, but you're A-type. Oh my gosh, you guys are destined to fail. Ooh. Sometimes people will say this is kind of like more funny, but that's that's the concept. Okay. Well, let's see how B-type namja or mm-hmm. B-type man does with B-type woman. So the bees, they get on really well together. They're yeah. like friends. Both are cool and easygoing. However, they can fight easily <laughs> and injure each other deeply. <laughs> I just had a uh, just an image in my head of like a physical like injury. Yeah, that's what um, they do. Yeah, and they could they could injure or hurt each other deeply because they know each other so well. Right, which kind of makes sense to me. I mean, think about it. If you're with your super casual, cool friend, and you're very like, yeah, easygoing, everything's cool, everything's cool. But then something really happens, then obviously you know where to stab the other person. Right. Yeah, so bees also need to look out. Yeah, they can be bees. They can be bees. <laughs> okay, so B-type man yeah. and O-type woman, the... The girl has leadership, and she Mm. can lead the guy through his mistakes and craziness. And the Bs also love the Os for their straightforwardness. Yeah. Okay? But if they are both stubborn, they will fight (laughs) to the end. So, you know, I pulled this off of a Korean blog Mm -hmm. where this person wrote it all down in great detail. And I felt like everything was like, you know, there's this downs, but if you do this and communicate well, you do great. But when it came to B-type guys, everything was like, <laughs> oh, everything's great, but this can happen. It just seemed to be quite negative. It's a little biased. Towards the B. It's yeah, totally biased. <laughs> yeah, B guys, it's very right. biased. So B-type guy with AB-type woman mm-hmm. is the AB wants to be more neutral, so uh, she might feel overwhelmed by B's forcefulness. Yeah. Okay. Which makes that sense. That makes sense, yeah. Totally makes sense, right? So even you're buying into this. You're like, oh, yeah, that, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> no, I, I mean, hey, it, 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 there's some truth to this, I think. Yeah. So, okay, here's O-type guy and B-type or A-type girl. A, the girl can embrace O's active lifestyles. If they fight, the O's are very good at cooling it down and resolving things. They are the ideal match. Ding, ding, ding. We have a winner. <laughs> A-type girl and O-type guy. Yeah. Ideal match. You guys are the ideal match. Now, O-type guy and B-type girl. The B-girl has a very firm personality. You know Bs. The shy O-guy, well, they can get on really well with her. But he has to be honest and express his emotions to understand a B-girl. Because she's very, you know, more flamboyant. But an O-guy needs to be like, oh, okay, let me tell you how I feel. Then they can get on well. See? great o type guy o type girl they will fight because they're too similar they can hurt each other's feelings and if one side doesn't give in it will implode oh yikes it's pretty bad too yeah so that's the thing if you're too similar to your partner does that cause trouble it it can for sure yeah it really depends on how or what areas you're similar in right if you're both similar in you know uh, fist fights <laughs> then like that could go badly. Uh, yeah, I can. I was thinking more like personality stuff. But oh. Yeah, physical stuff too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you're both chronic liars, mm-hmm. that is category. See, bad characteristic. Right. Unless you're both very understanding that you're chronic liars. Oh, that's right. And then one of them lies to the other like, hey, it's okay for me. <laughs> and the other one lies back like, yeah, I'm okay with it too. Then, then there's really no problem, right? There we go. That sounds healthy. All right, let's move on to the AB guys, AB blood type guys. So AB, remember, is rational and cool-headed and logical, but they can become calculating and obsessive. Or no, that's A's. Anyway, calculating, right? So think about that. Think about the guy. You know the guy that's like, oh, are you having a bad day today? She's like, yeah, I'm really sad. You should come for me. And he's like, well, there's no reason for you to have a bad day because nothing bad happened. And then she's like, you don't care about me. You don't care about anything. He's like, no, I'm just logically explaining to you the situation. You know what? I bet you there's a lot of women out there right now who are like, hang on. I think my boyfriend's an AB. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I know people like that. It's funny. Like they're so, I guess just so direct and like very. Very cool headed. So realistic, yeah. beyond like what's emotionally acceptable. Right, <laughs> the robot. Yeah. So the AB guy yeah. with the A girl is well. The AB is very sudden and can surprise a girl. Sure, you sneak in. You know what I'm saying? But it can stress her out. <laughs> she has to persuade the guy uh, that he is very stubborn. It's because ABs can be very stubborn, mm-hmm. right? Because they're so logical. Like, well, this is the correct answer. 
So I stick with that answer. And then A, she's like, hang on, you know, let's talk about this. So she has to persuade him. Mm, that makes sense. See what I mean? Yeah. So A, B, guy with mm -hmm. B, girl. The guy is cold and logical, of course. If uh, he suppresses the girl's wilderness. <laughs> Sorry, I can't read here. If he expresses, suppresses the girl's <laughs> wildness. There we go. It can cause trouble. <laughs> wilderness i guess that, i mean that's sort of similar i don't know i don't know what that would look like yeah so b girls are very you know more wild and carefree and like doing their thing and so a b is like you need to be a little bit more in control of you yourself chill out yo beep, bop, beep, bop, bop, beep, beep. and so then it can cause trouble right a b guy with o type girl o's are very straightforward ab's are very rational mm -hmm. so if ab is considerate he might be able to get over o's fierceness you know her straightforward is like hey but otherwise this is a uh, bad match a b guy o type girl is bad match yeah. according to blood type compatibilities yes and a b guy with a b girl is good because they're similar and they understand each other well but yeah. be careful not to make each other tired, tired. Yeah, so good conversation and mutual respect is definitely a must. But I mean, that sounds pretty good to me. You know, two ABs. There's no of this fling fling emotions. Yeah, it's very even kill. Yeah. It sounds like. It's like, oh, what do you want to eat for dinner? And then they're like, oh, I have broccoli and chicken in the fridge. And they said, that seems to be the reasonable option for dinner. Yeah. And this is how the conversation goes. Very exciting, as you can see. This is extremely exciting. <laughs> so now looking at this, what blood type do you think I am? Oh my gosh, man. I don't know. Because again, I initially I saw you with uh, with at least three out of four. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to have to say, I don't know. I'm going to stick to B. Do you think I'm a B? Yeah. All right. So surprisingly, I'm A. You're A. Which no one ever expects. Uh-huh. Except it kind of makes sense. You know, because A, so I'm, I'm organized. Yeah. I'm perfectionist. You didn't say yeah after that. Well, I mean, there's also <laughs> punctual on the list. Oh. <laughs> uh, and then... <laughs> and patient. Patient. Arr. But you have the creative stuff. That's true. Yeah. I am creative. For my bad character... But like A characteristics, bad one, self-conscious, hardly. I'm not even some conscious... At all. I'm barely self-aware and <laughs> obsessive. I'm not obsessive and uptight. Am I uptight? Mm, I would say no. Yeah. So this You're is never uptight, really. I'm hardly up. You're uptight. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could deny that right now, but I can't. <laughs> I, yeah. you know, judging by this, I say you're a blood type, mm -hmm. in which case, if you're a and I'm a, we could get on really well. We'd be comfortable like friends, but it could right. get boring. Just have a good day every once in a while. Mm -hmm. my hope is that you're an o we still have some possibility you could be o because o and a are ideal right yeah okay yeah that makes following? sense that would yeah. be cool and you know it, it is true true that like if we have a disagreement mm -hmm. that you're the one that cools it down that that's you right. resolve it yeah yeah see that's a, that's why it would be so a good match yeah so we didn't we need to figure out your blood type yeah i guess we need to go get tested yeah let's do that yeah. That'd I mean, cool. can I just go to the clinic and I think you say, can. Hey, what's my blood type? Probably. Mm. You should check it out. Yeah, because my mom, surprisingly, has no idea. She doesn't know your blood type? No, she doesn't know. Either she never knew or she just doesn't remember. Uh, I'm sure she just doesn't remember. Because I remember asking her right before I moved to Korea. Because I wanted to know before I got here. Yeah, because you were going to ask girls, like, hey, are you B? Are you an A? I mean, you know, I got to, you know, do my due diligence. Your due diligence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So anyways, <laughs> let's talk about some famous people's blood types. Yeah. If, you're, if you have always wondered, what do I and Mikhail Gorbachev have in common? This might be the moment you'll find out. Because, surprise, he's an O. Mikhail Gorbachev is an O. Okay. So some more O's would be Elvis Presley or John Lennon, hmm. which makes sense. John Lennon to me seems like such an O type. Yeah. I mean, I don't know John Lennon personally <laughs> <laughs> or... I'm, you, you, know, you have been leading me on, sir. <laughs> but yeah, I, that would make sense. But uh, I guess I could see the similarities between you and Britney Spears. Oh, because she's, an, she's a. an A. Yeah. Yeah. And Jet Li. Jet Li. I have great martial arts skills. And when my hair is long, it looks awesome. 
Yeah, but I think he is bald now, to be honest. Oh. Or he has very short hair. That's not Yeah, but anyways, Ringo Starr is also A. That's a little sad. <laughs> Why is it sad? Because nobody remembers Ringo. Yeah. Do you know Ringo Starr? I don't know Ringo. I was just going to say, you don't <laughs> know Ringo Starr. <laughs> <laughs> He's from the Beatles. Oh, okay. But no one knows Ringo. So Everyone's Ringo, like, oh, Paul. Paul, oh, John. John. Oh, George Harrison. And who's that guy back there? Ringo's the drummer, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, welcome to the A Club, Ringo. Man. So Bs. This makes sense. This makes perfect sense. Leonardo DiCaprio. He's such a B. Paul McCartney. Super B. Jack Nicholson. B, 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 B. So we teased a little bit earlier about Korea's obsession with blood. Yeah. This blood pride, this ethnic purity pride. You know, we're homogenous lineage. We can trace all the way back to my great-great-great-grandfather, even so far back that you can distinguish between Kims. Which Kim are you? Oh, this is my Kim background. Oh, okay, we are family, or no, we're not, right? Korea has this sort of, you know, in a way, it's kind of primeval. It's like not modern concept of clans, Right, this this sense of we belong to each other because we are the same blood type, as opposed to we have developed this far or politically these are our ideologies. Korea still remains in this concept of blood, blood, you know, brotherhood mm-hmm. kind of thing, right? Right. That still exists today, and so that nationalistic pride that that's made up of their their sense of heritage and ethnic identity, because we're Korean. Right. Yeah. And one one way to make sense of this is during the Japanese occupation, right? Because because I look at this concept and I'm like, well, it's very outdated. It's not really rooted in science or anything like that, but it could have its upsides. Mm. You know what I mean? So like during the Japanese occupation, which lasted about 35 years, this is when uh, Japan colonized Korea and were essentially putting the people down and saying that Korea or Koreans mm. were essentially like the same as Japanese in terms of yeah. like blood and and I guess ethnicity wise Mm-mm. and you know because Koreans for so long had this idea of no we're a pure blood we're a pure people mm. this really gave them a sense of unity and they were able to overcome essentially this oppression and it led to you know, eventually the freedom from the Japanese rule. And so I think in that sort of context, this mindset really did help because it gives, it gives the people a sense of unity and, and, you know, I guess a pride and strength Yeah, in one another. Yeah, entirely. I mean, that's why they say, you know, blood is thicker than water. Mm -hmm. That's why you would stick up for your family, no matter what, even if they are being awful to you and you're like, well, Oh, we're family, right? Because it's a sense of blood ties. And so I totally agree with you, especially, I mean, it was during this this time where um, the author Shin Che Ho, he had written about the Korean minjok, the Korean people. And this was some supposedly the ancestors, the Korean ancestors who had fought off invaders to protect the Korean ethnic identity. And so we are minjok, right? We have to fight off these invaders. And this this helped to lift the Korean people's spirit and fight away the Japanese oppression, right? So we're not Japanese, we're Korean. And so in that sense, it does create a a bond and a strength and a trust in one another, just like you were saying. So yeah, it makes sense that that existed back then, but how come it still exists today? Right. We have um, we mentioned earlier again with World War Two, this racial purity ideology, which was really prominently held up by Nazis. Right. In Germany um, saying, oh, the Aryan race, the perfect race is racial purity. And if you're not, then you're less. Well, that concept was done away with after World War Two in the West. But here in Korea, it still continued after World War Two, after the Korean War with the presidents. Right. Um, Using one Park Chung-hee. I think I might have said earlier, they used this racial purity ideology to do exactly what they had done before, to gather the people's strength, to bring the country together, to rally them all, because after the Korean War, Korea was so devastated. So they had to find this internal strength with each other to overcome their difficulties. Right. This does have, uh, let's just say, waves of consequences when we're talking about mixed Korean kids then that were born after the war. Or um, the GI kids, perfect example, and adoptions, 
this still has repercussions today. And we're not going to get into that now. But a lot of this comes back down to blood. Right. And the blood ties that exist in Korea. Right. Yeah, it's very interesting to look into. But I think for, especially for a lot of foreigners that come here, because you hear a lot of people talk about, well, a lot of Korean people are either racist or they're so nationalistic and they're so prideful as an ethnic group. Mm. But if you look into some of the things that you just mentioned that we won't get into, it sort of makes sense, you yeah. know, why a lot of Korean people look at, I guess, other people groups the way they do. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's something that we'll definitely touch upon. I mean, we've mentioned, mm -mm. Uh, you know, about this many times throughout the podcast and throughout the videos. But I think it's something that if we can really try to come from a place of empathy and trying to understand mm. Uh, I think it would make more sense of why a lot of people think the way they think. Sure. Not necessarily, not saying that it's good or it's a great mindset, but you can at least make sense of it. Yeah, that's a fair point. I think it's too complex and bigger than anyone to make a moral judgment oh, yeah. on Korea's mindset of their obsession with blood purity yeah. and ethnic pride because it, it is stemming from something that was very real and did bring a lot of good to the nation that we live in today. However, if there is anything I will say, Korea does need to reckon with the concept of multinationalism now because now we have an influx of foreigners who are not just, you know, citizenship foreigner. Their face is foreign, but now they're Korean citizenship holders, mm -hmm. right? Or marrying here and, and so many mixed Korean kids coming in this new generation and the prior generation of mixed Korean kids like you and me is becoming more prominent in society here. How's Korea going to accept that? Is there still going to be a separation between what is Korean and what is not? Right. So, yeah. So I, I will say, I won't make a judgment moral call, but I will say that this is something that needs to be talked about. So um, I think that's it for blood types in Korea. Let's go and check out what your blood type is <laughs> and see if we're an ideal match. Maybe we could do a live podcast. <laughs> Oh, that's a good idea. That was a total joke, but you're like, kidding. yeah, you're yeah. totally on board. So. My eyes are shining at the concept. <laughs> yeah, so anyways, we'll see. If I find out, I'll let you guys know. Yeah. Well, since that's it, we're going to wrap up the podcast at this point. If you guys want to share or leave a comment or anything, if you're watching this on the YouTube channel, let us know what's your blood type. And if you're dating somebody or you're married, what is your partner's blood type? And see if you guys are a compatible match. We'd be curious to know if you can sort that out and let us know why, why you're a compatible match. If you're listening to this podcast um, or you want to share it with anyone, you can always find us anywhere you get your podcast and subscribe everywhere. And of course, we always welcome listener mail at The Happy Project at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. We are The Happy Project. Why do you always laugh when I do that? Because you're so like...